Folks, we're on the road again. We're here. This is Reverend Gary Emus. Shalom. Uh, Bread of Life Ministries. Watchman on the Tower at Levite. Okay. Uh, I'm also putting out a, a call to all pastors right now. If you like the messages that you hear today, we're in the last of the last of the last of the last days. You want to hear this messianic Jew? You want to hear a, a powerful message from the spirit of a living God out of me? Then call me. Call me at 815 91 <laughs> Hallelujah, 922. I don't even remember my number. 0194. Part 3 we're going to talk about today. God's calling you out. Is God calling you out today? Is God calling you out today? Is God trying to reach you? Is God trying to say to you, listen, your grandmother was praying for you. Your father was praying for you. Your grandfather was praying for you. Your mother was praying for you. Your sister was praying for you. Your pastor was praying for you. Everybody was praying for you. And we're calling you out today. Jeremiah 33 says, call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And Jeremiah, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. See, that's the same thing that we're doing on the, on the, on the, on the road that we're on right now. Remember about those three cars, about the diner between heaven and hell, about those three people. Doesn't matter who those three people is. It's just a metaphor. It's a metaphor about a, a, a what happened with a man who had everything and and was willing to you know not give it up. You know, he's same one like the man where Jesus Christ said, he says, Lord, what must I do? He was 21 years of age, and all of a sudden he was of age. And next thing he says, what must I do to follow you? He says, sell everything that you got, give to the poor, and then follow me. Do you think maybe if he would have done that, God? would have answered his prayer and God would have gave back what he gave pressed down shaken together flowing over giving unto your bosom do you think that God would have gave him a better kingdom than he had just like Job do you think that would have happened I believe it would have happened church father in the name of Jesus father as we go through calling God's calling you out right now in these last days oh God he's calling you out he wants you he don't want you to die. He don't want you to go to hell. But he's calling you out right now. Father, right now, take down this fleshly man. Rise up in the spirit of living God and him, Father God. Let him speak forth with the word that you want to have. Especially, we're going to be talking about a close encounter of a God kind. And we're titling this part three. Lord, we're going to title this, God's Calling You Out. He's calling you out right now. Thank you, Jesus. He's calling you out. Are you not listening to him? You know what's amazing about everything when God calls you out? The first thing that we see about the three people that were in the diner after God says, I'll give you anything that you want. You tell me what you want. I'll give it to you. Give it to you. Whatever you want. Whatever your heart desires, I will give it to you. And it's free. It costs you nothing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who shall believe it in him should not perish. Oh, God. But have everlasting life. Oh, my heart's breaking too, God, for those people, those lost souls out there that don't know you. Oh, God, help those people find you. Help them. You know, I'm in the highways and the byways, folks. My hands are on fire for the Lord. My feet are on fire for the Lord. And you know what? I don't know why. I know I just got to keep on doing what I got to keep on doing. It doesn't matter if one person hears me, ten people hear me, or nobody hears me. Because you know what? God hears me. He hears my heart. But he's calling you out today, just like he did. And the first person that he, in, in, in the diner that you see out of the three, you see the man that had everything. You see the, the man that knew the Lord. And then you see the woman. There was a Sunday school teacher that wanted to divorce her husband. Then you see the one that really knew the Lord. But before she knew the Lord, she, he saved her life. Is God trying to save your life today? So the first thing he does is he calls that person out. How does he call you out? Well, the first thing we look at, if we look at Matthew 21 and 22, so if you want to turn to your Bibles, we're going to turn to Matthew 21 and 22. And things who, whatever, so ever you ask in prayer, believe in it, you shall receive. So the first thing that we see is so whatsoever. Oh, we get people to be like, whatever, whatever. 
I mean, I, I, I see so many people today, they're just, they roll their eyes and they go, whatever, talk to the hand, please. Because what it is, is people are so caught up in self. They're caught in self-denial. Denial about what's going to really happen. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive out there. It doesn't matter what lifestyle you have. It doesn't matter who or you go to church. It doesn't matter who you associate with. It doesn't matter. The bo bottom line is it does matter where you go. And that's why Jesus put a diner between heaven and hell. God said, I will move heaven and earth to save your butt. That's what he's basically saying. Where everybody goes, whatever. He's saying, whatsoever. Whatsoever you pray for. What Do you know, you want to save your marriage today? Since that's the first person that he called out. The first person that he, he said, he said, hi, Hank, as he gave him the menu. And Hank said, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I used to love that show. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? What a, what a catchphrase. But you know what, people, for years after they were watching that show, I'm going to tell you what. I think it was Different Strokes. I believe that was the name of the show. I'm not really sure. So don't quote me on that. But I, I do know Gary Coleman, God rest your soul. I hope that you knew the Lord before you died. I hope you're now walking in, 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 on the streets of gold and you're just having a great time and you're six foot one. Praise God. Hallelujah. If that's what your desire was of your heart, praise God. Whatever you pray. So the woman decided she wanted to walk out the door with that man that had everything because she wanted to get away from him. She didn't want to have anything to do with him. Is that your marriage today? Is that what you're doing? Are you started starting a business today? Not telling your husband or your husband's not telling you? Are you going out and buying something? Are you not doing it together? Are you yoked together with your husband? Are you yoked together with your wife? Are you doing things that God has called you to do instead of trying to be a stupid ignoramus? You know, when you became married, you became two flesh, two spirits in one flesh. That's right, because the Bible talks about how when the man marries the woman, he cleaves from his mother and father and he cleaves to his wife. So now, in God's eyes, you have a covenant relationship and you are one. You're one flesh but two spirits. When you walk out of the will of God, do you think God's going to honor and bless you? Nope, he's going to hurt the other one. And when the other one walks out of the will of God, God's going to hurt that one. Why can't you stay in line with the will of God? Quit being unequally equally yoked, even though you call yourself Christians. But understand what God did was he asked him, he goes, and after everything that he said, it's almost like watching uh, John, John Travolta when, when, when he was in the Sweat Hogs. Uh, uh, welcome back, Cotter. And, and Cotter asked him, he said, well, what, you know, uh, what do you want? And he says, uh, you got root beer? He went through everything. He went through the list. He went orange soda. He went through Coca-Cola. He went through lemon-lime. He went through strawberry. And he's like, you got a root beer? See, that's the way our mentality is. We think we need to have a root beer. Why? Because we're trying to find things that are out of the box, and God's trying to tell us, this is all I have. Because you're not listening to me. Now, I'll give you root beer if you will listen to what I have to say. Because one thing that he said after the woman decided that she was going to walk out of that diner. See, sometimes we walk out of our relationship. I was married to a person 35 years. I never should have walked out of that relationship. Why? Because of pride. Why did she do the things that she did? Because of pride. Pride goes before destruction. Haughty spirit, folks, before the fall. You remember that in your marriage. You remember that God holds it very honorable to marriage more than anything in the world. That's what God doesn't want, divorce. Do you think God wants divorce? you think God wants to have a rid of divorce, but you're out there and you're doing soul ties? Quit doing soul ties. Quit having sex with everybody. That's not what God wants. Because guess what, men? Guess what, women? You're held responsible for all the relationships that you have. You don't think God doesn't hold you responsible? So what does this man do? His wife walks out. The first thing he says, Jesus looks over to him. He goes, do you want your wife back? He goes, Bows his head and he says, yes, Jesus. You see, he acknowledged who he was. He knew who he was. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Peter, but yet your Father in heaven revealed this to you. 
They all were thinking about everything else. Oh, move. some say that you were Elijah back from the grave. Some say you're Enoch. And he turns right straight at Peter and he says, Peter, who do you say I am? And he says, flesh and bone did not reveal. And he says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And he says, flesh and bone did not reveal this, but my father in heaven. Sometimes you let it, got to let the very man and the very God tell you what you need. You think you need everything, but you really don't. He says, why don't you ask me? He says, ask in prayer. So the first thing he says is, ask me. And then he bows his head and he says, Jesus, save my marriage. Did he ask very much? No, he said, Jesus, save my marriage. He did exactly what he asked him to do. And he believed. And guess what? You'll see later on he received it. Why? Because God is faithful and just. That's why. He's all-knowing. He's all-omnipotent. He's all-seeing. He knows everything. He's all-powerful. Omniscient. Why can't we see that? There are people out there right now that I'm, I'm, I'm watching this. We're, I'm, I'm broadcasting. I'm watching people. and They're caught up in self. Not one person has come here to read a Bible. They have to go on the line. They got to check out the Facebook they got to find out what's going on. But we're going to continue on because if we won't, we won't get through this. Then the next thing we see is in Luke 11, 20, and 33. 23, 11, 23. I love this part. Because in Luke 11, 23, here's what he says. You ready? You'll love this. I'm sorry, not Luke. Ah, my, my bad. Sometimes I even... Sometimes I even mess up. We all mess up. And we all fall short of the glory of God, I guess you could say sometimes, because we do mess up. Duh. Do you ever mess up? I. We all mess up. Oh, here we go. All right, Tay. For as verily I say unto you that whoever say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe in those things which they shall come to pass, he shall have what... So ever again, whatsoever he desires. See, this is called a mountain of difficulty. We all go through a mountain of difficulty, and we're trying to go around the mountain to get away. God doesn't want you to go around the mountain because you agree we're going around the mountain when he comes. We'll be coming around the mountain when he comes. He'll be riding six white horses. He'll be riding six white horses. No. God just wants you to go around the problem. God wants you to go through the problem. Because when you go through the problem, you go over the mountain with God. And God will help you get through this problem that you're in. The mountain of difficulties is not difficult. In marriage, it's not difficult. I want you to know this is why we're calling you out today. We're going to start with this part of, of this particular era. So, the, the, so we see a mountain of difficulty. And when we see a mountain of difficulty, God wants you to petition him. Petition him. Petition him. Because he says, therefore I say unto you what things you so ever now desire. Whatever your dis heart's desire, ask me and I'll do it unto you. Because I love you. I gave my life for you. See the scars in my wrist. I did. I, didn't, I did this so you'd have life and more abundantly. And we're moving on a little bit more. And I want to talk to you a little about ask, seek, and knock. And then we're going to end this message today. But ask... Ask God for anything. But by the way, uh, we're going to talk about what happened. Seek, Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Knock in the door. You know there's no doorknob that you, you can open. God has to open the door for you and let you into his life. And I'm asking you today, oh, God, forgive me for I have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. Come into my life, save me, sanctify me, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I ask this in Jesus' name. Folks, if you said that prayer today, I want to hear from you. Call me, 815-922-0194. Pastors, you looking for a, a, on fire for the a minister? I'm the man. This has been Reverend Gary Amos on the road here. Shalom.